Hello and good morning. I'm Pastor Jerry Bond. Welcome to an old cowboy talking about Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we come together in agreement today. This is the day that you've made. We're glad in it. We're rejoicing. We're coming into your house with praise and thanksgiving, and we're exalting you, Father, because you're worthy to be praised. And let this presentation of your word this morning bring forth salvations, bring forth healings, bring forth deliverance, bring forth setting the captives free, blind eyes to, to see and ears to hear, and the thoughts and the intents of your heart, Father, would be spoken upon, and the people would receive joyfully and gladfully, and that they would be walking and praising you, Father, and it would be a new time in this place. We give you praise in all these things, and let the word of God go forth. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and all the people said in agreement, amen. Today we're going to talk about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. I want you to think about this today as you literally, you personally, the Spirit of God has anointed each of us to go forth and to be his witnesses. He says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to be his witnesses in Jer Jerusalem, Samaria, to the uttermost ends of the earth. So today, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, stop for a moment and listen to uh, the word of the living God that's telling us a story. We know that John was baptizing down by the River Jordan, and Jesus came down, and as everyone was finished being baptized, Jesus went up to John, and he says, Permit it to be done that I would be baptized. So we know the story that when Jesus went down into the water, when he came up, the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, as like a dove and a voice out of heaven says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and we see the father we see the son we see the Holy Spirit notice something else about this and you, you think about this you'll see what it, that is true Jesus did no miracles he did nothing for the for, for for the Lord or himself or anyone prior to this now, he was led immediately into the wilderness, and there he was tempted and tried for 40 days and 40 nights, and the enemy tried to get him, and he, he, he defeated Satan with the word of God. He says, man shall not live by the bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So that is a living example right there for us. Then he came down by the way of the Galilee, and he entered into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he reached for the book of Isaiah, and it was presented to him, and he opened it, and there he found the place where it was read, Isaiah 61, 1 through 5, where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the blind shall see, the deaf shall hear, and proclaim the release to the captives, and the dead are raised, the lepers are cleansed, and the good news is preached, the gospel is preached. Well, if you want to go to Matthew, the 11th chapter, in the 5th verse, John has been put in prison, and he sends his, his disciples over to Jesus, and he says, are you the one, or do we need to look for another? So they were all looking for the Son of God. They were looking for the Messiah, the promised one that would come, and it would save the nation of Israel. And we know the story that, that how Jesus came and how he was born as a, as a baby in, in, in Bethlehem, and we know how he was raised, and up to 30 years he did nothing but here we find out that Jesus was baptized at the river with water. He was also baptized by the Spirit. And so we see him to opening the book, and he's reading the book to us. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to what? The deaf shall hear, the blind shall see, the lame shall walk, the lepers and the cancers are clean, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached. I would like for you to take a moment and think about literally taking this as a word for you today, that you yourself are anointed. You know, in, in the book of Ephesians, it says the fivefold ministry, the prophet, the pastor, the apostle, the evangelist, the teacher, and he says those five offices all are anointed. But there's a lot of people that are anointed in the word of God, by the word of God, to go forth and be a witness. Jesus told the disciples, he says, you must go and wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit you're endued with power in Luke 24, 49. So they went into the upper room, approximately 120. We also know that between the day of resurrection and the day of Pentecost, that Jesus appeared to over 500 and some people. We know that on the day of Pentecost, only 120 were in the upper room seeking him, seeking righteousness 
and seeking the fulfillment of what Jesus had told them to go and do. We know on the day of Pentecost, in Acts 2, 4, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Spirit would to be poured out. So Jesus told the disciples, he told his 12 and he told the 70 and he gave them orders to go out in his name and by the authority of his name. He also gave us that authority in Matthew 28 where he says 18 through 20, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go in the power of my name, making disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he said, lo, I'll be with you always. Then he said in Mark 16, verse 14 through 20, he said, go into all creation. He says, those that believe shall be saved. Those that don't shall be damned. There's the judgment right there. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall pick up serpents that shall not hurt them. If they drink anything deadly, the poison will not kill them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will speak with new tongues. And he says, he, he honored his word and confirmed his word with signs, miracles, and wonders following. So if you would literally take this as, as a word from God to you, to you personally, you are anointed. You have been given the Holy Spirit. You've been given the word of God. You are to go and to preach the gospel. But you know, there's more to it. You know, I've been on more, a lot of these mission tours around the world and all kinds of uh, activities and all kinds of uh of doctrines of men, and, and I can tell you from, from personal experience, the doctrines of men are just what Jesus called it, doctrines of devils, and it's also they were white tombs, they were, they were hypocrites, hypocrites, and they could not and would not allow the, the word of God to go forth. So what you have to do is you have to listen, you have to study the word, prepare yourself as a workman for the Lord, read and study and renew your mind daily with the word, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and understand that your steps are ordered by God, that you're not out there alone, that he's with you. Jesus told us some very interesting thoughts about being anointed. He said in, in the book of John, in John chapter five, he says in verse 19, he said, I only do, I only say what I see my father saying and doing. So then he comes along in that 21st verse and he says, the father shows me what he wants to do by the spirit. So if Jesus is a living example for us today, I would ask you, are you filled with the spirit or are you filled with self? Have you given up self? Notice something else about Jesus here at the river when he's being baptized. When all this is happening, Jesus came down there under the authority under, and being submissive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, he was not yet filled with the Spirit. And you're going to say, well, he was Jesus. He was the Son of God. No, if you read Philippians chapter 2, he gave up his deity to be a man, to live as a man, to walk as a man, to be. And only till after the resurrection was he back saying that he was the Son of God. So he was acting like you and me. But would you for a moment just allow your mind to think that here comes Jesus. He's come down to the river. He's being led there by the Holy Spirit. And we see him going under the water, being buried in the likeness of, of a spiritual death when he was fixing to do up on the cross. And he was going to be buried in a tomb for three days and three nights. And he was allowing this to supersede or to be in front of what was literally going to take the place of him not many days after this. So when you see this, when you understand this, it begins to enlighten you in what's going on. Now, the enemy will try to come in and he will try to deny the presence of the Spirit. He will try to deny the presence of the Lord. But Jesus tells us also in the 14th chapter of John, he said, I'm going to pray the Father and he's going to give you the Holy Spirit who will be with you and in you and around you forever and he will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, you're going to say something else. Well, this was the Son of God. No, the Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. So if he's not respecting Jesus more than you or me, that means that you and I are entitled to the things that Jesus had and gave us through the authority of what he's directing us to go in his name and be an ambassador for him. When you understand this, you will begin to receive and know who you are in Christ, in the anointing, in Jesus, what Jesus did, does, and will do in your life if you will allow yourself or submit yourself to his authority, to his leading. In other words, to be, take on the spirit of holiness and humbleness that the Holy Spirit directs you and me into the ways of the Lord. 
Jesus is telling you here the spirit of the Lord. In other words, he was receiving a prophetic utterance that was 800 years before his his uh, his uh, coming to earth and living here for 33 and a half years. This was prophesied about the Messiah. It was also prophesied that the anointing through the prophet Joel in the last days that he would be poured out, the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all flesh, men and women, servants, everyone would have the bountifulness. So we understand that Jesus was going to be this, the first of the firstborn of the, of the new generation, of the new creation, that we all were going to be recreated in the image of him and be like him and walk like him and act like him and be unto the Father as Jesus the Son, we would be brought in as, as sons and daughters of the Most High God and that we would be heirs to all the blessings that God wants to do. We also understand that Jesus came by the way of the Galilee through the Naphtali that a great light would be given to the Gentiles and that's most of us, that we are not a Jew born naturally but a Jew born inwardly by the Spirit of the living God. So we understand the things of the Spirit when you begin to dig into this a little more, you're going to find that as you go forth, the Holy Spirit will bring you to a place where you and me and all of us are coming to the direction of the Spirit and are led by the Holy Spirit. Notice something very important here about Jesus in this fourth chapter of Luke, how he was directed to go and be baptized, how he was led by the Holy Spirit into wilderness. One place says he was driven. He was therefore tested in all ways that was known to man at that time, how he defeated Satan, how he, he took, took the authority that was granted to him by the authority of God, by the Holy Spirit. Notice something else he said. He prophesied himself. He said, I have the power by the Holy Spirit to lay down my life and take my life back up. So when you begin to understand the authority, you begin to understand the humbleness and the holiness that the Spirit of God brings on you by the Holy Spirit, you begin to act, you begin to walk, you begin to, to be Christ-like or be anointed like Jesus was and is. He tells you that he will tell you all things in advance. He says in John 16, 13, he said, I have many things to say to you. So he was leading Jesus, the Father was, by the Spirit to go into the wilderness. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he was therefore tempted. He hungered, he thirsted, he was cold, he was all those things. And yet the Lord took care of Jesus. So if he, if he is the first of the firstborn and we're born as a new creation in him, we're baptized in the likeness of his death, we're raised to walk in that new life, and we're filled by his Holy Spirit, that we are exactly like Jesus. Not, not in, in physical uh, attribute, but in the spiritual attribute. Our spirit and Jesus are one and the same because we're vitally unique, united and abiding in him and through him he is in us. So when we begin to operate in this, we begin to see the things that God wants to do. Now we're living in a crucial time. I believe we're living in the days of the last days. Now how close is that? Jesus could come any moment. I don't think he's coming today, and the reason I don't think is because he prophesied that we, like in the days of Noah, the people would be eating and drinking and doing the, marrying and doing the things they do. You go all over the world, and people are living their lives just like we do here in America. They eat, they drink, they sleep, they work, they do all the things they do, they play, and they do it just like they did in the days of Noah, but the flood came, and they were left there, for, and they lost their lives, forever because they did not do what Noah preached that they must come to a place of repentance. You know, I must tell you today, and, and this is a sad thing, you go all over the world and the gospel has been so watered down and so formalized and so indoctrinated by man's thoughts that there is no power in it. We have a form of godliness, the Bible says, but we lack the power thereof. If you want to go do things in the Lord, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be filled with the Word of God. You will be submitting yourself to righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You will be hunger and thirst for righteousness. You will hunger and thirst to be pure in heart. You will want to do the Beatitudes. You will want to live the Beatitudes. It is not a something that you can whip up, you can make happen, but it is a yieldingness, a brokenness that the Holy Spirit brings and shows you how to live. Jesus humbled himself. Now, yes, 
He was the son of God before he came. Yes, he did all those things, but he did this so that he could come as a man. He could offer himself as a holy sacrifice without sin, live as a man and live without sin. So you and I need to come to a place where we don't sin. In 1 John 5, 18, it says there is a place where we can come to where we do not sin. And then the Bible says if we believe that we do not sin, sometimes we call ourselves a liar. But we do not lie and we do not do the things of sinful nature. We are renewed daily with the word and we are transformed and translated from glory to glory by the Holy Spirit into the image of Jesus. So when we began to receive this, we began to act upon it. We began to say, I see this. I see this Bible verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Jerry Bond, or upon you, whoever you are watching this TV show this morning, upon you that you can go forth if you'll be submissive to the leading of the Spirit. He will take care of you in times of famine. He will take care of you in times of riches. He will take care of you in all things. He will be all things to you all the time. He will show you the glory <clears throat> of the Lord. He will show you the presence of God our Father. And sometimes we don't have the understanding. Something will happen and we don't have the understanding. I was taken into a hospital here just a few days ago in Eastern Europe. And it was a very primitive hospital, very, uh, very lowly. Didn't have much uh, of the modern techniques that we have here. We're very thankful that we live in a country that has all these instruments and things that can help us to be well and to receive healing for our bodies. But there were four ladies in this room and one of them had cancer and the other three were very sick. And I shared Jesus with them and they got saved and I prayed for them to be healed and they got up and started dancing. I mean, they were so excited and holding their hands up and dancing before the Lord. They were excited what God had done. They took me into another hospital in another city and there was an older gentleman there, and the man could not talk. And I, through an interpreter, I began to uh, speak to him and asked him if he would like to be saved if he couldn't talk to shake his head yes. And he began to shake his hand and, uh, head, and he got saved. And the, there was a, a pastor in the bed beside him, and I asked him, I said, would you like to be saved? And this man said, this pastor says, yes, I would like to be saved through the interpreter. And so he got saved, and, and they, he went home from the hospital that afternoon. And at 10.30 that night, the man passed away and went to be with Jesus. And I asked myself, I said, why was it uh, so miraculous that an old boy from Texas, 10, 12,000 miles from home, came into a, a hospital room and shared Jesus with a pastor who'd supposedly been preaching for years and years, but yet he had never made Jesus the Lord of his life. What this tells me is we all, can have the anointing. We all can have Jesus in the fullness of the Spirit. You know, the enemy tries to come in, and he tried to come into that place, but God was there, and the peace of God was there. So I'm telling you today, receive this word from the Lord. Receive it and take it personally, because the Lord is ever wanting to be present in your life and my life. You know, there's a lot of people on this earth that are Christians and profess to be Christians, but they never witness, they never tell anybody about their love for the Lord, they never go out and they never pray for the sick, they never minister deliverance, they don't do anything. They're missing great joy, they're missing great peace because when you, there is nothing like sharing good news that Jesus came out of that grave and gave us eternal life. You know, you could just be walking down the street in these foreign lands and people would just come up to you. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you today, you can have this, and it's right now. The Spirit of God is saying to you, if you will ask Him, come into me, fill me, overflow me with your presence, Lord. I am submitted to you. In Luke eleven thirteen, 13, it says, how much more will our Heavenly Father give us the Holy Spirit to those that ask? So I asked you today, do like Jesus did. He says, he professed and confessed the Spirit of God was upon Jesus. He was already the Son of God. But if he's our living example, why would he do that if he doesn't want us to do it? So he's doing it and did it so that you and I would know to be walking in his footsteps, receiving what he has for us, and doing that today. So today, ask yourself, am I doing all I am called to do? And am I witnessing and telling others about my love for my Lord, my love for my God and my Father? 
I'm, or am I thankful for what he's done in my life? Am I grateful for what he's doing in my life? Can you stop and think everything what he's doing? You know, it is an awesome, awesome time to walk with the Lord. Can you, can you, can you see this today? Can you come on and, and, and do this in your own life? You know, there's amazing what Jesus told the disciples. He says, there's five or six things there. He said, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the cripples are healed, the dead are raised. And, you know, I've been told, you know, that I shouldn't be given my testimony how God raises the dead, but how can you not give your testimony? And then the gospel is preached. Well, what is the gospel? That is Jesus coming into your heart and my heart and living there forever by the Holy Spirit, him empowering us to go and be his witnesses. Notice the disciples, how every one of them denied Jesus. Notice what they did in the next few days after this all happened. Notice how Jesus went around and preached in all the villages and told the good news. Notice what he did. Notice how he was suffered. Notice how he was beaten. And they counted it all joy when those things happened to him. You know, but when you're doing exactly what you know to do, you have a perfect peace. Is the Spirit of God on you today? Can you confess that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to be his witness? Can you, can you say that you want to pray for the sick? Well, that all ended when Jesus died and the disciples died. No, the Bible says that God changes not, and Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if they don't change and the Word doesn't change, well, then who changed? Me or you? Or we'll believe some false, false statement by someone somewhere, someplace. You know, I saw in, in the last few days, I saw the glory of God and I saw the enemy come in and try to stop it. And I saw the Lord just take and move me to another place and his glory fell there. I saw people get saved. I saw people healed. I saw blind eyes open. I saw miraculous things. And would it be, would, am I any different than you or anyone else that he would do this for me? So you have to stop and think. What and why and how does this happen to anyone? Well, Jesus was going about as an ordinary man, as a carpenter's son, did nothing for 30 years. And all at once, yeah, there he was. The Spirit of God came on him. The presence of God came on him. The leading of the Spirit. Yes, he knew the Word, but he was not doing anything that we can read or find out in the Scripture. So I would, I would just leave this question with you. Are you and do you? want to be anointed like Jesus was to do his perfect will. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you that you are our God and our Father, that you change not, that your word changes not. You're the Lord God, our healer. You're Jehovah Rapha. You are our peace. You're our joy. You're our sustainer. You're our riches. You are everything. And you sent your son in the likeness of you, Father, that we could attain the glory and the presence of you, Father, by your spirit that we could go and lay hands on the sick and they would recover. We could cast out devils. We could call cancers to be removed. We could call blind eyes to be opened and deaf ears to be opened and cripples to walk and the dead to come back to life by the unction of the Spirit. We can do these things and we can preach the good news that we can have eternal life. Because the Bible says, for with the heart man believes, with the mouth he confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. And we can have that today. And I pray that every person that reads and hears this message today and opens their eyes of their understanding to the insight that the Holy Spirit would have them, that they are anointed to go forth and to preach the good news, to tell the good news, to, to lay hands on the sick and do the things that, that the Bible says they can do. The authority is in the name of Jesus and by the authority of the Word of God. And we thank you, Father, that you are honoring your Word all across the universe today. And all the people came together and said, Amen. Today, if you've heard this message, please subscribe to our daily devotions at PastorJerryBond.com. There you can view our TV schedule, the replays of our shows, and subscribe to our social media. There's a place there for donations, PastorJerryBond.com. You can go there and you can go online and you can send money through the uh, media there and help us to take this gospel of an old cowboy take it, talking about Jesus. You can come online there and to BNN Ministries and you can send checks and money orders and things through the mail to Post Office Box 51542 Amarillo, Texas. 
you can do all these things and help us take this message of how Jesus is walking, talking, and living in, in, in his children all over the face of the earth. We just want to thank you. We just want to praise you and thank you and, and just tell you how much we appreciate what you've done in helping us take this message for your loyal support, for your encouragement, and all the things that a lot of people are helping us to do. There's many more stations we'd like to go on, and we'd like for you to partner up, cowboy up with us, and come and help us take this message to, of an old cowboy talking about Jesus. You know, it's a simple message that Jesus went to that cross he died there, and he was buried. On, on Easter Sunday morning, he arose that you and I and anyone that will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth shall be saved. And by the stripes upon his back, we are healed. So you have to begin to believe somewhere, and you have to begin to confess something, and you have to walk in what you know, and the Spirit of God will come upon you just like he did upon the Lord when he says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's upon you today. If you'll just so much as believe, the first little step you take for him will begin a life walking with him in the fullness of him. And you'll see and know all the things that he's doing and done in your life. I would like for you to come together in, with, in agreement that this, this time that we're here together has inspired you and brought you to a place where you have received the glory of the Lord, that you are wanting to be blessed, that you are wanting to tell others about your Savior. I hope this message has blessed you, and I just give all praise to, to the Lord today for what he's doing. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, amen. Mm -hmm.